All right, everybody, this is Ross, and today's video, we're gonna be pruning my five-year-old Espalier peaches. And for those of you guys who don't know, these are, in my opinion, the pride and joy, the specimen trees of my yard. I really, really love these things. They're beautiful, um, especially, I think the form of an Espalier is just unrivaled. They really, in terms of fruit trees, they just look, striking um, and I think if anyone comes in here and they first enter actually over here and they come through and they see probably a lot of this going on and what's behind you guys but then they come over here and they look back and they just say wow you know um, I really do believe that this is a great way as a backyard grower to grow your fruit trees um, not just for beauty but they're very productive for the amount of space, especially that they take up. I mean, each tree gets about six foot in terms of the width, and they're coming out about four feet from the fence. Um, and that's really what an espalier is, guys. So for those of you who are confused, we're growing fruit trees against a structure, a fence, a house, a wall. Um, it's one way to do it. And in my opinion, uh, like I said, they're super productive because this tree alone on the left, we have two of them, same age, basically the same size. Um, the one that didn't bear last year because uh, probably of some biennial issues, I don't know, some bearing issues there, but the one on the left here, this is Red Haven, I think, and Red Haven put out about 300 peaches for me after I thinned pretty vigorously. <laughs> Um, and that's way too many peaches for one family. Um, I mean, at least for me. I, I mean, my parents love them. Uh, my brother loves them. People who I spend time with love them. Everybody that I gave them to couldn't believe how good they were in terms of that was like the best peach they ever had. So, you know, I think uh, if you're going to do this as a backyard grower, you really don't need more than two trees. It's good to have that pollination, that cross-pollination, but and to have them harvest at different times. The Alberta, believe it or not, is like a month after the Red Haven. Um, so for the most part, I think these are just wonderful trees to have in a backyard setting. Um, so not only are they, you know, um, they don't take up a whole lot of space, they're very productive, they're very beautiful, but they're also, it seems like, less disease prone. Um, they really don't seem to have many disease issues. I've seen very little peach leaf curl, and I live in an area that gets a lot of humidity, a lot of rain. Um, I don't see many issues on the fruits. Um, I don't have many insect issues. I mean, these trees seem to do just wonderful. And for me, I'd recommend this to everybody as a backyard grower. And you could even do them in a terrace setting. You know, this is down slope here. I could probably have another two espalier trees right here. Uh, only eight feet away from those trunks. And then I could do it again in this row here. I mean, I could have a couple terraced trees that in my opinion would look incredible. Um, yeah, and they would be super productive and easy to maintain. I'm gonna show you guys right now the pruning. Um, these are gonna be such a joke that you're not gonna believe how easy this is to maintain. So what I'm gonna first start out with is my saw because even peaches, which are really not supposed to be a spy aid, can be a spy aid, guys. Um, it's really not rocket science. And the fact that I'm getting so many fruits tells me that I can really cut out a ton of growth. And these are getting tall, right? These are 20 feet tall. So what my goal is and what my plan has been sort of from the beginning is to come in here and cut out at the top tier all the three-year-old wood. Because we have growth here. This is, uh, this is one-year-old wood. This is two-year-old wood, which has then put out one-year-old growth. And this whole top layer is kind of doing a recycling process because the way that the peaches fruit is on last year's growth. On that one-year-old wood at this time of the season when everything's dormant, whatever is one-year-old, it should have these flower buds on them. And those are the, the, the branches that you really want to keep. And usually on any tree, because of apical dominance, because of how plant hormones work, a lot of the fruit is not up at the top. A lot of the fruit's actually at the bottom because a lot of this growth is then growing now down towards the ground or even horizontally. So this is like a lot of this stuff here is gonna be super productive and a lot of the fruiting is gonna happen in this section here. So I personally don't really wanna get rid of this stuff. I, I'm gonna barely prune any of this 
this can eventually be recycled, right? This branch, I think, maybe over here, this is a three-year-old branch here, a fruiting structure, maybe even four years old. This is three or four years old. So I could, if I wanted to, let these guys go for a lot longer, keep those branch structures, those fruiting structures in place, maybe do a little bit of detail pruning in here to kind of bring back the the, uh, the height in which they're extended into this pathway here. Um, but for the most part, everything's gonna come out over here and everything that you do as a grower of fruit trees really ought to be focused on, in terms of pruning, taking out the bigger stuff first, guys. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut out all the three-year-old branches up here. I have one here, I got one here, I got one in the back that actually looks like maybe it's four years old, and then this one back here. And if I take out all this growth, we're essentially gonna have ourselves an extremely reduced in height tree that's constantly recycling all this growth up here. Because when I take out this, or any of this stuff up here, it's gonna remove that apical dominance. And I can then have these one-year-old growth here, or these two-year-old branches, to then take over the following season. And they'll fruit for me, of course, in the first year, the second year, and even in that third year. But everything that is already three years old, that's already fruited for me, has got to come out. So that's what we're going to do. I get enough talking here. Let's take some of this stuff out. And this is a bit strenuous. So excuse me, guys. Get yourself a saw, because this is really, it really does come in handy for this kind of work. And try to make yourself a nice cut that's nice and flat and clean. I mean, look how much growth I just took out of this tree. Absolutely insane, isn't it? And if I look at the, the branches on here, I'm seeing a lot of fruit bud, a lot of fruit wood here, a lot of fruiting buds, I should say. But to be honest with you, a lot of this I can't reach. It's too high. A lot of the birds and all the other critters are gonna go after this stuff. So we're not even gonna worry about this stuff up here. We're gonna protect this and we're gonna really harvest from here. And maybe I don't get enough fruits as I wanted, but I mean, look how many fruits, if you think about how many fruiting buds are down here, what am I gonna do with all these fruits, you know? So we're gonna come back in here and I'm gonna actually take this one out at a little bit of a higher height, I think. Let's take this one out up here because I like this branch. Alright, well that could have been better. <laughs> Probably should have had a ladder for that one guys. But I mean look at that. That's insane how much growth I just took out of this. And you may think, wow, that's too much growth, guys. Or Ross, that's just too much because you're only supposed to take out about a third of the wood every year, right? That's true, but I still have all this stuff down here. That really is gonna be that production for me. So maybe I will consider keeping some of this, but for the most part, I'm not. I'm not gonna keep much of it. I'm gonna take this out. This is a tough angle here. Maybe I should move on to a different branch. All right, so this one's also gotta come out. And you can see I'm kinda keeping this stuff here, even though this is not really growing up. Um, and I also realize that I have a branch here that I'm tying down, so I can't really cut this off. Um, so we, would, we can leave part of that, but let's come up over here 
And let's take out, at the very least, we can take out this branch. Now let's just take out this whole thing, guys. It really doesn't matter. I will say it's kind of hard to get into the tree. That's the one issue with this. In terms of the saw that I'm using, it's a silky saw. Highly recommend a silky saw, guys. In fact, I got one in Japan when I visited, which is pretty cool, um, at least to me. So we just took out three branches. The rest of this, really, we're not gonna take out a whole lot down here, like I said. So the last one here, I gotta come in here and take out all this up here. And that's about it. And I think I need to go on the other side of the fence to do that. So I'm not even gonna worry about that for this video, for the purposes of this video. But let's imagine that all this growth up here is gone. We have this branch that's being tied down to the wire. We have to keep that, but everything from this line up is gone. And the rest of this is super productive for me. And what's gonna happen, as I said, is that there's branches here, you can't really see them because there's a tree behind it, but there's all these one-year-old wood that's growing up and two-year-old structures. This three-year-old growth is gonna come out and that's gonna remove that apical dominance and let these branches here grow and take this place. So that's really all it is, guys, recycling that wood, preserving the stuff down here. I mean, this is one way of doing it and it depends, I guess, on what you're growing, maybe they're peaches, but maybe they're pears, maybe they're apples, and they have, sp they have spurs, right? So, you know, these don't have spurs and I can kind of, if I wanted to, if they had spurs, I could come back to the spurs, keep the spurs and that's gonna be where that fruiting happens. But this has gotta have a recycling process of this one year old growth. And I'm just gonna come in here with my hand shears with my Felcos, and I'm just gonna cut out some of this growth that uh, is dead, diseased, or damaged. And that's it, that's literally it. Everything else in here is gonna be preserved. I'm gonna cut this back, just simply due to the fact that it's coming too far out into the walkway. We can dispose of the wood, or you guys can uh, keep it on your property and compost it. So that's sort of it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you guys learned something. Check us out on Fig Boss, also on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments. Let me know how your spies are doing down in the comments. All right, everyone. Take care.